this video we will be seeing about the anatomy of eyelids anteriorly it is covered by the skin and posteriorly it is covered by the mucous membrane this mucous membrane is nothing but the palpebral conjunctiva it is also called as the tarsal conjunctiva the eyelid has uh, muscles muscles and it has uh, nerve supply and uh, glands uh, various glands like the small globin which we will be discussing about and all these three are embedded inside a connective tissue which holds it together and this connective tissue is denser in the posterior aspect and uh, that is why uh, we call this as the tarsus and also the tarsal plate there is no gland cartilage in the eyelid just remember that the skin is loosely attached and uh, there is no fat underneath its layers and uh, it has fine hairs and uh, like other parts of the body the hairs are sedicious and uh, sweat gland openings uh, near uh, the hair follicle the margin of the eyelid there is uh, another comparatively short as uh, compared to the rest of the body they are curved and they are strong and these are associated to both uh, sebaceous and sweat glands like uh, other parts of the body this sebaceous gland is called as the zeis gland whereas the sweat gland is called as the mole gland they are uh, larger than the normal the ducts of the mole gland they open into the sebaceous gland that is the zeis gland or they also open directly into the hair follicles now let's see about uh, the margin the margin has the anterior and the posterior border uh, at the junction of the posterior border where the skin continues into the conjunctiva the type of cell lining is that of the stratified squamous now let's zoom in into the margin of the eyelid let's study about its structures the anterior border is curved come and only the posterior border is sharp and uh, this is the opening uh, of the glands etc this is the tarsal plate in which the sebaceous gland meibomian they are embedded into the tarsal and they are uh, a common duct this opening which is a common duct this uh, meibomian opening at the anterior border there is a gray line it is a relatively avascular uh, structures and it is fibrous made of uh, fibrous tissue hence uh, incisions for the surgical procedures are uh, done at this point the sebaceous gland they are about uh, 20 to 30 in number on uh, each of the limbs the gray line is of significance Let's see about the glands. Other accessory glands are uh, glands of uh, wolf ring. They are uh, present near the tarsal, and the Crowsey gland. They are present above superiorly and posteriorly. Now coming to the muscles of the eyelids. And it has orbiculars. So orbicularis oculi. And uh, this uh, levator palpebrae superior is it actually it uh, is inserted into the tarsal posterior anterior aspect of the tarsus. This is we are drawing this this eyelid is upper uh, eyelid that's why the levator palpebrae is inserted. There is another muscle called as the muller's muscle. 
uh, it is you can say it is it has some peculiar characteristics like uh, it is non striped muscle and in the upper eyelid it is uh, derived from the levator palpebrae superior whereas in the inferior eyelid it is from the inferior rectus the functions of orbicular supply is to close that of the levator palpebrae is to lift up or open and the same goes for the mother's muscle and let's see about the nerve supply to each of this muscle First, we will see about the sensory supply to the eyelids. It is uh, supplied by the trigeminal nerve. You know, trigeminal nerve has three branches. The upper eyelid is supplied by the ophthalmic branch, whereas the lower is supplied by the maxillary branch. The orbicularis oculi it is supplied by the seventh nerve, that is the facial nerve. The levator palpebrae superioris it is supplied by the third cranial nerve. That is the ophthalmolar or a sentinel muscle. It is supplied by the sympathetic chain. Sympathetic chain. Hence, any damage to this, as in Horner's syndrome, causes a sign on the eyelid. Now, see about, let's see about the glands. Mebomian gland. These are mebomian formations. These, when an inflammation comes to the these gland, because uh, due to some separation, it is a pus forming. It is mostly caused by the Staph aureus bacteria. It is called as the audiolum externum or the sty. There is any inflammation to the mebomian, it is called as the audiolum internum because this is exterior and that one is interior. The gland is location. Audiolum internum is comparatively painful, and there is another condition. There is another uh, thing: the chronic inflammatory granuloma of this meibomian gland. It is called as the chalasium. As in other kinds of infection, we give antibiotics and drain the pus for audiolum internum and externum. Whereas for chalasium, we can give. Uh, Corticoids, if it is a uh, small chalicion, whereas if it is a large one, we give uh, curatage. We do curatage. Now let's recap glands, Z, small, and the meibomian glands. As the other accessory are Wolfling and Krause. Inflammation of the Z and the meibomian is called as sty and cordialum internum. The granuloma of the meibomian is chalicion. Now about the muscles. Orbicularis oculi, levator palpebrae superioris, and the mullus muscle. Now, nerve supply, orbicularis is by the seventh nerve, LPS is by the third, whereas the mullus is supplied by the sympathetic nerve. Any damage to the sympathetic nerve due to harness causes symptom of the eye, that is the mebomian. Thank you for watching.